For the first time in the history of our five-year league, the Northern Mystics are on top of the competition table. The New South Wales Swifts have won their last six. The Melbourne Vixens have dropped their last three. It is all happening as we approach round 10 of the ANZ Championship. As I say hello and welcome to Centre Pass, the official video podcast of the ANZ Championship. Dan Ryan here alongside Sherelle McMahon. Sherelle, we've had the Vixens on top, the Thunderbirds on top. Now it's the Northern Mystics. <laughs> yeah, and it's just a really good indication of this season and how even the top teams are. But not just the top teams, but the teams kind of pushing to get into that top four. So, yeah, really exciting to see the Mystics up on top. Well, a cracking round of matches in round nine of the ANZ Championship. Let's check out all of the results. It, of course, started in Perth on Sunday with the Queensland Firebirds getting up over the line by one goal against the West Coast Fever. The New South Wales Swifts notched up their sixth consecutive win, defeating the Vixens by six goals in Melbourne. The Mystics surviving a big challenge from the Tactics to win by one in Auckland. And then the Pulse convincing eight goal winners over the Southern Steel in Dunedin. Shrell, let's talk about that game in Perth. It was an absolute ripper, the Firebirds and the Fever. The Firebirds defeating the first Australian team in the league for 2012. That's right, which is an amazing stat. We're well over halfway into the season with the Firebirds notching up their first win against an Australian side. It's it's a really an unbelievable thing. And in fact, um, their, their last loss was against the Vixens, where they uh, nearly got there. They only lost by one goal. And for me, th this is their second one goal win in a row. And it just shows that perhaps Perhaps they're building that little bit of resolve that wasn't there in the start of the season. Very impressive in the first half, the Firebirds, but the second half is won by four goals by the West Coast Fever. With about four minutes to go in the game, the Fever were in control of it. It was their game to win, but unfortunately, just a couple of errors and some inspirational play from Laura Geitz was the difference in the end. That's right. Geitz, he seems to be, you know, pulling out the stops in the end to, to save her Firebirds team. and. Uh, the, the, the Fever team, uh, you know, they're a team that we really thought were going to start to make some really big steps this year. And for me, it's surprising to see them so far down the ladder with not many wins. But uh, maybe we are starting to see that all coming together now for this second half of the season. They had a shot with Catherine Cox to level the match at the end. She couldn't do it. But at the end of the game, she said on behalf of the team that they were quite happy with that performance to be so competitive against the defending champs. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the Firebirds are so strong right throughout. And... Uh, Fever certainly have some stars within that team, but there's a lot of youth there, a lot of inexperience with the combinations out on court. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure that they're, they're really disappointed that they didn't quite get there, but there's a lot of real positives. Another positive was uh, the initiative shown by the West Coast Fever defenders. Ebony Beckford Chambers <laughs> having a crack at lifting Susan Furman. Probably not the best way to go lifting Susan Furman. It didn't work, obviously, but uh, worth a shot anyway. Well, worth a shot. I mean, why not give it a crack? I mean, Sue Furman is obviously such a tall player. She's very strong and... I guess, you know, that why not give it a go? And uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite work and we had to look quite closely to see it actually <laughs> happen. But um, yeah, good on her. And I, I kind of thought that maybe we might see a few people uh, trying that out. So well done to Fever, but maybe better luck next time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sherelle, a huge game on Sunday in Melbourne was the Vixens against the New South Wales Swifts. It was a very, very tight game for most of it, but the Swifts just having the upper hand. Yeah, they did. Look, for, for the entire match, really, the, the Vixens got a, a small break right at the start of the match, but um, after that, the Swifts really were uh, just on top for the whole game. Uh, it wasn't really dynamic, um, explosive play, but it was just quite steady play by the Swifts, and um, they just got it done. Their attack line uh, is incredibly uh, frugal with the ball. They don't pass it away much, and uh, it was hard for the Vixens to really you know, get those turnovers. Susan Prattley worth another mention. 32 goals from 37 attempts, 86%. Arguably one of the informed players in the competition, not just goals, but across the board. And also, too, the Swifts really noticeable to be able to get out that, get out that win without Kim Green there for the majority of the game as a foot in. Injury. Yeah, that's right. Kim obviously left the court with that foot injury and we saw uh, Paige Hadley come on into her position and yeah, I've been watching her closely this year. She's been getting some opportunities and doing a great job, really. They don't seem to lose a lot, which is amazing when Kim Green, who is such an amazing player, steps off the court. They seem to be able to cover that quite well. and. Um, you know, their defensive lineup, they put the pressure on the Vixens, uh, an, an attacking lineup which was, you know, really well touted at the, at the start of this season as, you know, being really special. But the, the defensive lineups of different teams are starting to get on top of that, that attack line. Sure, Melbourne Vixens, that's now their third consecutive loss of the season. Where's the team at at the moment? Yeah, the, the third loss, I mean, they started the season so well with three on the road and three wins out of that and then continued that on with a couple of amazing fight back wins. 
wins against the Magic and the uh, the Firebirds, and but now starting to, to slip on on a couple of games. So uh, really tough kind of period for them. And next week and the following weeks are going to be so critically important. They're still up in the four and still well with the ch in, within a chance, but they need to regain that form, which they have lost. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they respond in round 10. Of course, we'll look at that in a moment. Time now to have a look at the Northern Mystics against the Canterbury Tactics. This was a one-goal win for the Mystics. Not many people thought that the Tactics would come so close, but what a great performance by the Tactics. Really great performance to, to push the Mystics, who, are, as we mentioned, are now sitting on top of the ladder. And um, I think, Dan, you were quite disappointed you weren't with us last week to talk about <laughs> Devastated. The, the Harrison <laughs> hoist or the, the chairlift. Um, but, and we did see it again a couple of times this week, but not with as much success. Yeah, that's right. It just goes to show how difficult it actually is. So a lot of people were talking about how it was going to reinvent and change the game. But, you know, full credit to the Mystics. Got to do it last week. But it just shows just how tough that skill is. Absolutely. Really tough. And good on them for continuing to try it again, uh, I guess. Uh, the interesting point for me was that Tactics had five more attempts at goal uh, than the Mystics. So they are getting the volume there. But I guess uh, Catherine Latu shooting 33 out of 34 again it just really pushes their percentage up and you know she just makes the most of the opportunities that she's given by her defenders. One player I wanted to mention for the Canterbury Tactics is their captain Marie Bowden. She's been the captain of the team for the last couple of seasons. They've won one game. This year they've been so close in so many. She's a real positive leader for this team and we we're seeing in the, in, during the broadcast of the match just how positive she was with her group and some great words and inspiration. It's, it's great to see her being so positive for the team. She is. I mean, she's been a great leader in um, New Zealand netball, I guess, for a long time and, and we, we are seeing that and it is great to, um, to watch that happen, I guess, with a team that doesn't have the, the experience and I guess the runs on the board to have a leader who still remains positive and uh, can almost inspire them to a win against the top place side. It's, um, yeah, great to see. Yeah, very, very close they were, that is for sure. Time now to have a look at how the ladder stands after nine rounds of the ANZ Championship in 2012. And this is how it looks. The Northern Mystics on top for the first time in the history of the league. The Thunderbirds, the Vixens and the Swifts all on 12 points. The Firebirds and the Magic sitting outside the top four. But it's probably between those six teams, Shirelle, to make it through to the finals. Yeah, that's right. Look, it's still it's so incredibly tight. A couple of the teams up in that top four a game behind, having had their bye already. So a little hard to see exactly how it's going to play out, but so tight. Shirelle, time now for Performer of the Week. Who is it for round nine? Well, for me, uh, it was actually Catherine Cox, and I know that her team didn't quite get up over the line, but for a few weeks now we've been talking about Catherine um, and her combination with uh, Bassett and, and getting that work rate up a little higher and getting some more volume into her shot. She had 33 attempts this week, and um, it was mentioned on the commentary that she made a conscious decision to just get in there and be more of a presence in the circle, take a bit of pressure off Bassett and um, take some of that responsibility. So I loved seeing that, and that was she was my performer. Well, and it saw what kind of a difference it made too to Fever mm. when Cox is in that circle. So we'll keep an eye on how the Fever go the second half of the year. My performer of the week, Sherelle, is the coach of the Central Pulse, Robin Broughton, of course. She made the move to put Jolene Henry into centre last week against the Thunderbirds. It paid dividends. She went with the same lineup again, and I just think having Henry in the centre has brought the whole team together, and we're now seeing the pulse come together like I think many people predicted at the start of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great to see. And I've never seen her play there before, but she is incredibly versatile. I'm going to have to say the most versatile in the, in the uh, competition. So well done, Robin. We're getting closer to the finals. These are the matches coming to you this round. The Firebirds will take on the Swifts in a huge blockbuster in Brisbane on Sunday. Another blockbuster, the Vixens and the Thunderbirds in Melbourne. Then it's the Tactics and the Pulse in Christchurch. And rounding out the round on Monday night will be the Magic and the Steel. Sherelle, we're going to start by having a look at the Firebirds and the Swifts. A huge game for so many reasons. A must win for both, but this is really, really important for the Queensland Firebirds. It is. I mean, really, if they don't win this game, it's going to make it tough to make it into the finals. And the Swifts actually got over them in round four by just the five goals. So it no doubt is going to be tight. Um, but uh, look, I I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how each of these teams play out. I think they're both really building into the season. The next game we're going to have a look at is the Vixens and the Thunderbirds. It's second versus third. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Both teams coming off, I guess, in different form. The Vixens 
three losses in a row, the Thunderbirds off the bye and then the one goal loss to the Pulse. So they're mm. both going to be absolutely hungry for that win. They will be. And, you know, it's such a great rivalry between the Vixens and the Thunderbirds. So there's, you know, you, they don't need any extra, but there is a bit extra on this for both teams, really. I mean, the Thunderbirds having such a great season so far, sitting second on the ladder. Uh, the Vixens off three losses, which is probably not where they expected to be and certainly not where they want to be. So um, the margin last time they met was 14 goals. That was only a few weeks ago, but um, things have changed since then, haven't they? Certainly has. Time now to have a look at our final game we're going to preview, and that's the Magic and the Steel. The Magic coming off the bye. We feel like we haven't spoken about them for a while, but again, it's like a finals game for the Magic. If they want to crack the top four, they need to win all their matches and hope some results fall in their favour as well. That's right and you don't want to be relying on other results to give yourself a finals chance but that's the position of the Magic and the buy for them actually came at a really good time. They had some injury concerns with a few of their players, Casey Williams being the most notable with her ankle injury so that week off right at that time may have just freshened them up and um, they could make a charge, who, who knows. Really interesting round of action. Sherelle, we uh, tried to take a few chances with our tipping last week, but we've still both ended up with two out of four, and we're tied at 29 apiece. Who are you tipping for round 10? Okay, my tips for this round are the Swifts, the Vixens, the Pulse, and the Steel. What about you? Okay, Sherelle, I'm going with the Swifts to beat the Firebirds, Thunderbirds over Vixens. I'm going with the Pulse and going with the Magic. So two different again, so it'll be very interesting to see how it goes. <laughs> Well, that is about it for another episode of Centre Pass. Thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter and jump on the ANZ Champs website. Check out the Sky Sport website in New Zealand and the Network 10 Sport website as well. Check your local guides for all of the broadcast details. Sherelle McMahon, thank you once again. No problem, thank you. Looking forward to round 10 of the ANZ Championship. We'll catch you next week for Centre Pass. Goodbye for now. Thank you to our sponsors, our principal sponsor. Associate sponsors. Support sponsors and suppliers and our broadcast partners. <laughs>